activity, mm -hmm. and then them file false criminal charges against people. Okay. So I want to do a FOIA request on what the video is being used for. Is it being turned over to the DA? Is it being used for investigative purposes? No. no. Then what was the purpose it's, of the video it then? Is, it is not my video. But I have a right to request that video. If you request it, it'll either be denied or it'll be granted. This is Susan Bassey. Somebody recently sent me this video from Cody High Roller down in Texas, and it happened to have two of my favorite topics, judges and public records requests. I'm going to leave a link to Cody's channel down in the description box. I hope you'll go and subscribe and stick around, and I'll show you how it applies to judges and public records in California. Exactly. I know you can. That's why I said. I said I want to request the video she did of me. Oh, that's not that's not public record. Yeah, it is. No, While she's on the clock doing video, I can Anything request can that. Yeah, I'd like the Freedom of Information Act request. Okay, make a request and it'll be. Okay, can you get me the form, please? I don't have a form. When Cody High Roller noticed that a public employee in a court clerk's office in Texas was taking his photograph during business hours, he requested the records. She refused to give them to him, and out came the judge from his chambers. The judge told him that he needed a form to request the records because when a public employee or an elected official takes your photograph on a personal or government cell phone during business hours, they create a public record and you have a right to obtain those records. And in California, a form is not required. Can I ask her if she wants to tell you if she can or if she not? Oh, yeah, she can tell me. I asked her. She didn't give me the same answer. All right. Have a great day, sir. Thank you. You said you were going to ask her or not? Well, I want to know what the video is being used for. There's not any video being used for anything. Well, well, here's the thing is I got her on camera holding a video up like this. We've had instances where people come in doing constitutionally protected activity mm -hmm. and then them file false criminal charges against people. Okay. So I want to do a FOIA request on what the video is being used for. Is it being turned over to the DA? Is it being used for investigative purposes? No. Then what was the purpose it's, of the video it is, then? It is not my video. But I have a right to request that video. If you request it, it'll either be denied or it'll be granted. Right. If you want to make a request, make a request. And you're not telling me where to make my request at, and I'm being denied a form to do the you request. Make a request generally sent through the district attorney's office of Freedom of Information Act. They're, they handle most of those things. And th this is a county office? It is. It is. And you said I had to go to the DA's office to do the request? Well, that, they're the ones that generally will respond to it. Okay, well, I want to file. Where do I file my request at? You're saying the DA's office? Cody knew his rights and the law when it came to the photograph that was taken by the public employee. He requested the records, and the judge, not the district attorney, then denied his request. A judge acting in this capacity is acting in his administrative capacity. But here we see a judge actually advising on the law and making a decision outside of his jurisdiction because judges rule on public records law requests. They don't make determinations about whether to produce the records or not. He was protecting his court clerk and not the public or the law when he denied Cody's request. Wherever you like to. I'd like to file it here and get a stamped copy. If you file something here, it'll be acted on, okay? That's what I want to do. I want to know how to file, file Freedom of Information Act request. I, I was literally on. Well, I'm not saying you're a lawyer. You're a judge, obviously. Well, I don't know if you're a judge. You could be wearing an outfit. I, who knows? Yeah. I was actually walking out when I noticed the woman doing a video of me. That's when I came back in and said, I'd like to request that video now. Right. Well, thank you. Have a great day. Happy New Year. So you don't have nowhere to do the request no, at? Sir. No, sir. You file I think you do. Thank you. you should be able to file your request here. Freedom of Information Act request. So I'm being denied a Public Information Act request? I'm being denied a Public Information Act request. Sir, if you got any other business here, take oh, well, I'm, I'm probably going to go file a complaint now in this office. Go I want to file a complaint now. All right, sir. Thank you. Have a great day. Happy New Year. Yes, ma'am. All right, guys. So I guess I'm being denied a Public Information Act request. You, Is there a problem with me filing out a FOIA request here? And then Cody captured the judge doing something remarkable.
He walked over to the clerk's office window, and he started to help members of the public who were waiting in line while refusing to address Cody's FOIA request. Cody was not going to get the records, the records that included his photograph that had been taken by a public employee. And this is what the judge was doing in his administrative capacity, because he was not sitting on the bench and he was not issuing orders consistent with due process. He was simply working as a court clerk in this Texas courthouse. We can't file one here? You have a blank piece of paper I could use? You should have forms of handy for citizens that want to do requests. Yeah, uh, I would like to speak with the supervisor. Lastly, Cody asked to speak with the supervisor, to which the judge said he was the supervisor. Apparently on that day, he was the supervisor, the court clerk, the lawyer advising on public records, and the judge wearing a robe, although he was not in a courtroom. In California, cameras are not allowed in courtrooms without a media request. They're also not allowed in courthouses in Santa Clara County, the heart of Silicon Valley. We're done manually, um, and that is something that um, when you have a large number uh, of people who are eligible uh, as Prop 64 um, dictates, that's a process that would have denied the practical relief to thousands of people for months and not if not years and so i think that the efforts that have been made in order to do this uh, in a way that uh, makes it much more instantaneous is a huge benefit to those people um, who are going to be receiving this relief and frankly will be technology that will um, help us as we move forward in lots of other areas um, uh, where things that have been done manually can now be done on a more automated basis. this is judge eric geffon and he is a superior court judge in criminal court in Santa Clara County, which is in the heart of Silicon Valley. And you're watching him in a proceeding in 2020, where he presided over the expungement hearings of people who were convicted of marijuana offenses after California voters voted to legalize marijuana. Judge Geffon was presiding over this hearing where the rules were that the first media outlet to make a media request would be permitted to record in his courtroom. I was the first media outlet to request the right to record in that courtroom that day, and yet when I showed up, I found out that there were other members of the media there, and when I asked why they were permitted to record, they said that Judge Geffon considered me a social media reporter, and they were considered news reporters working for the San Jose Mercury News. Under the law, journalists are all required to be treated as members of the public or the free press. The free press is the only business that is protected by the First Amendment. And journalists, whether they're writing books, recording police officers and putting their videos online, or reporting for newspapers or blogs, they're all considered journalists and members of the press, and they are to be treated equally. Judge Geffon was also the judge over my criminal proceeding, where the Santa Clara County District Attorney prosecuted me for six years for recording the police officer that did this to me in a public court file room without a warrant. Recording. Right now, I am trying to do my job. Stop recording. I heard you. Okay. Stop recording. I heard you. That 12-second interaction with the Santa Clara County Sheriff's in a court file room cost me a six-year prosecution after the Santa Clara County District Attorney determined that it violated a local rule. There were over 70 hearings in that criminal prosecution, and the taxpayers paid for each and every one of them, including for the judge, who was Judge Eric Geffon from 2019 until 2023 when the case was dismissed just last month. But before the case was dismissed, the lawyer brought to the attention of the judge the administrative records that we had found that he had been participating in a bar bench media police committee meeting off record in his administrative capacity. He participated as a private criminal defense attorney with prosecutors and invited attorneys and also invited reporters. And before he dismissed my case and the conflict was brought to his attention, 
that likely tainted thousands of criminal proceedings. He said that meetings weren't so much as a secret as it was a testament to my skills as an investigative reporter that I had not discovered it sooner. For over 30 years, these judges, reporters, police officers, and prosecutors met in secret. They discussed their views, opinions, and ideas, and I'm going to be reporting on it in the Davis Vanguard, and I'll leave a link down below in the description. So thank you. All right, thank you all very much. We will be in recess at this time.